I'm going to go over this example, solving this quadratic equation by completing the square. Remember, in order to complete the square, what we're really doing here is we want to use the square root property. And in order to use the square root property, I need something on this left-hand side to be a grouping squared. And on the right-hand side, I can just have numbers. So somehow, I want to combine this x squared plus 3x plus 1 so it is a quantity squared. So what I really want on this left-hand side is a perfect square trinomial. And remember, in these problems, the first thing you'll want to do, and actually the first two steps are interchangeable, but I want to, I'm going to move this one to the other side, just so I'm left with x squared plus 3x equal to 1. The reason I do that is because it's this x squared term and this 3x, those are the two pieces that you're going to be given in each problem. And those two pieces are two out of the three pieces we need for a perfect square trinomial. And what you'll have to do when you complete the square is find this missing third term here that we'll, we'll actually put somewhere in there. We'll call that D. We're going to add a D term to both sides. And then once we have that, this x squared plus 3x plus this D, these three pieces, hopefully when we, if we choose the right D, we can factor that into a grouping squared. So once you move this 1 over to the other side, which we did, and we move this 1 over here, and now we just need to make sure that the number in front of x squared is 1. So if this, say, was a 4 in front of the x squared, we'd want to divide both sides by 4. If it was uh, a 2, we'd divide both sides by 2. But since we have a 1, we can actually right now just solve for d. Find this missing piece that we want to add to both sides. And the formula for d, remember we take the middle term, which in this case is 3, we take, to solve for d, we take 3, we divide it by 2, and then we square it. So in order to write a perfect squared trinomial, I'm going to have to add the factor of 9 fourths to both sides. And yes, you will have to work with fractions. So on this left side, I'm going to have x squared plus 3x plus 9 fourths, and I'm going to write that here. And then remember, we have to add the same thing to both sides, so we're going to get 1 plus 9 fourths. This left-hand side, I specifically added that value of 9 fourths because I know it's going to factor into a perfect square trinomial. And it's going to be x and whatever the b, or excuse me, the b divided by 2 term is. Before you square it, you take 3 divided by 2. Before you square that, that's really what is going to be here. So we're going to have plus 3 halves. And now you can see that if you square this out, the ends will be x squared, and you'll have 9, so that'll be x squared. That'll be 9 fourths. And then the middle term will be 2 times 3 halves times x, which is indeed 3. So that works out. And then over here, 1 plus 9 fourths. Well, I know 1 is just 4 over 4. So 9 fourths, we can write that as 13 over 4. And you want to combine that into one expression. Once we do that, and I hate to keep using different colors here, but hopefully it'll help. Now on the left-hand side, we have the we have a square. We have a binomial square that we can take the square root of both sides. We're left with x plus 3 halves. And on the right side, remember, we're going to have plus or minus root 13 over root 4. And actually, that's going to simplify for us pretty nice. We'll have x plus 3 halves on the left. On the right, we'll have plus or minus root 13 over 2. And now I want to subtract 3 halves from both sides. So I'll get x equal to minus 3 halves plus or minus root 13 over 2. And I would be okay with you leaving it like that. I mean, they do have the same denominators, the same denominator. We could combine them, but I'm okay with you leaving it like that because we do want to keep them separate if we can. Again, to summarize, our goal is to use the square root property. And we can't do that unless, you know, we actually did that. Whoops. We actually did that down here. We finally got 
a square equal to a number. But in order to do that, we have to you know, figure out, use the x squared and the 3x that we're given, figure out what that missing piece is that's, that's missing on this side that turns x squared plus 3x into a perfect squared trinomial. And that piece was 9 fourths. And we know how to find that always by taking this d, uh, or this b term, whatever's in front of the x, divided by 2 and square it, which we got to be 9 fourths. So we added that to both sides simplified this right-hand side. We were able to now factor this side, take the square root, and solve for x.